for me, he's probably the smartest coach and probably the first coach to, well, besides Pop, but the first coach to actually believe in me to be um, a, 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 a star on the team. What did Rick Carlisle do for you and, and what type of coach was he to you? Rick is different. I love Rick. Yes. He's different. Different. When I say different, man, he's just, he's hilarious. Like the way, from, from the way he calls timeouts to everything he does, he's just a quirky dude. But when it comes to basketball, man, he's just like. Genius. 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 He was a, he was a great, great dude. When I played, he let me go. Mm -hmm. When I go, he let me go. And so when I used to talk to him about like things I had to do, whatever, and like what, look, I was like, coach, like what I gotta do, yada, yada, yada. He just basically just go play, man. Just go play, be yourself. Uh, he, he, told me to, you. he told me to limit my mid ranges, <laughs> but I was thinking if I make him, be good. Mm -hmm. I make him be good, but uh, he's. It's a method he, behind everything he say though. He, everything's calculated. He, he, he's, he, he, yeah, it's calculated, Everything's exactly. calculated. Everything's calculated. He was a great, he was a great dude to play for. I loved it. He's the only coach, Matt, that I played for in 14 years that began the season. He bring each player, the starting five, he bring each player in before the season and tell them what he wants them to do. So you know your role. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you're not going out there stepping on nobody's toes or you're doing what's best for the team. And when the coach does that, it simplifies, he simplifies it for players where they can understand what he need them to do. He's the mm -hmm. only coach to do ever done that. And I think all coaches should do that with players. He's, he's definitely straightforward, yes. which I love. Whether it was whether you liked it or not. Yep. There yeah, it is. Ain't no guesswork. Knicks, free agency. Uh was there a chance in Dallas? The the, the bright lights in New York were calling your name. Talk to us about your free agency. There was a chance. Okay. There's a chance. I I really did want to stay in Dallas. I think before the season, um before my fourth season in Dallas, my last season in Dallas, uh, we try to extend um, our contract, like whatever we can get, was like, the most we can get was like four years and 55 million. And so obviously we wanted to do that. I wanted to stay there. I, th I thought I would be there for a long time and uh, I liked my role there. Um, it's funny because my agent was like, I mean, you can do so much, you can do, you can get more, you can get more. I'm saying like, well, like I just, I want to be safe. Like, I'm not trying to gamble right now. This is not something you can really gamble with if it's out there. Right. And so, but they they were like, we want to see where we're at, you know, about like 20, 25 games into the season. But we were like, all right, well, if we're not going to do it, I kind of don't want to do it until after the season. I'm not trying to think about this. During the season, right. Yeah, so there's a period where Luca went out and I started to start. And um, I was playing really well. I think I was averaging like 20 and like six, maybe, whatever. And so it was about that 20, 25 mark. And so we went back, we're like, hey, like, if the deal's there, we're thinking about it. Like, I'll do it. Like, right now. And still, it was no. Like, it, was, it wasn't a hard no. It was just like, we want to see, we want to see. So, I'm so like, this was Dallas. This is Dallas. Uh, this is still in Dallas. Because okay. I, I originally, I wanted to stay there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, trade deadline comes. I'm like thinking, like, all right, well, if, the, if I'm not getting extended, I'm probably going to get traded. Probably. I think the way I've been playing, like, this is like. Playing well, right. I'm playing somewhat decent. And so, that didn't happen. And then, um. Yeah, so I, the, the deal came on the table after the trade deadline. I was like, I, I no, I think, I think I've outgrown that now. Right. Okay. Personally, that's what I thought. I was like, I think I've outgrown that. Obviously, going to playoffs, Luke gets hurt like second to last game or last game of the season. And so we're, he's out for the first three games, and I obviously did what I did. Ain't no looking back. Ain't no looking back. And so that all happens. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of my timeline so I don't mess up. So they'd be losing the Western Conference Finals. And I remember seeing something on Twitter after the game, and it was like Mark saying, hey, like we can pay him the most money. And so he says that on Twitter. He says that like in the in an interview, like oh, with season, whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. whatever, like literally right after the game. And so I'm thinking like, all right, I'm okay. I just, I just, after that, it was like crickets. Mm. From my point of view, I can't speak to anyone else. I mean, just from my point of view, it was crickets. Mm -hmm. And so, and obviously I saw like New York making moves and saw all that stuff. I was like- Home. Close to home. Close to home. Two hours away from where I was, or an hour away from where I was born. Yeah. Um, parents live on the East Coast, whole families on the East Coast. So I started thinking like, yeah, mm. I could, this, this could be a real thing. And so um, then here we are. Best move you made.
<laughs> Best move.